Hi! Imagine this. Your best friend lives in another city, and one day he asks you to come over urgently. Today, all you need is to buy a plane ticket, and you'll be there in a matter of hours. But what if you lived in the past, where there were no smartphones or airplanes? <laughs> the trip would be much more eventful. Two days ago, you received a letter from a friend asking you to come to him as soon as possible. He has something incredible, and you obviously have to see it. You are intrigued and decide to go to him at noon the next day. You drink a large amount of water before going to bed to wake up early. <laughs> By dawn, you will need the toilet so much that you wake up. Native Americans used this method before the alarm clock was invented. You go to bed excited about the upcoming event. You wake up wanting to use the bathroom. It's still dark outside, so you probably have woken up too early. In the outhouse, you have a corn cob instead of toilet paper. Don't ask how, but a lot of people used it even after the paper appeared. When you get back, you decide to get some more sleep. Just like people in the 21st century turn off their alarm clock to get a 10-minute nap. You expect a rooster that screams every morning will wake you up. But it got sick. It seems you will oversleep, but the knocker-upper knocks on your window and wakes you up on time. You completely forgot about him. In many cities where people worked in factories, there was a knocker-upper, a man whose profession was walking past the houses to wake people up so they were not late for work. They walked with a long stick and knocked on the windows. You're going to brush your teeth, so you grind some oyster shells into powder. Then you rub it into your teeth to scrape off the plaque. Before the toothbrush was invented, people used everything, even charcoal. And in Europe, rich people had black, dirty teeth because of sugar. It was a very expensive product, and poor people would blacken their teeth to seem rich. Well, you're definitely not a fan of this fashion. Without proper dental hygiene, life might seem bad, but it wasn't quite true back then. Unprocessed food, such as wheat, rice, fruit, and veggies, was natural and safe, protecting teeth and making them even stronger. You want to have breakfast, so you go to the baker's. It isn't open yet. Clocks and watches weren't a thing then, so people didn't much care about exact time. Only when the first railway was open, people began to watch the time not to miss trains. Stores and shops weren't an exception, so there was no clear work schedule. The baker comes in in 10 minutes, and you finally buy fresh buns. You go home for breakfast with milk and buns. You don't have a fridge, but you have a frog. To prevent the milk from spoiling, people put a frog in the milk jar. The frog's skin secretes special substances that repel microbes, and the milk doesn't go sour. Funky, but true. After breakfast, you're getting prepared for the journey. Your favorite Persian suit you washed with lye on the river yesterday is already dry. You take a pan, put hot coals in it, and iron the suit with this pan. You go to the city again to hire a coach, uh, the kind you ride around in. You pay the driver and ask to pick you up around noon. You expect to arrive at your friend's house next morning, and he must be warned about that. You come home and write a letter. The postman is not working today, so you decide to send a homing pigeon. You tie the rolled letter to its leg and let it go. The coach has arrived at your house. Now, you're looking at your nails. They're very long because it's been months since you clipped them last. Yeah, long nails used to be a sign of luxury and wealth. But you decide to clip them to go incognito on the road. There were no nail clippers in the old times. So people used knives instead, or even sharpened shark's teeth. It was a long and tedious routine, and nobody could be bothered with that. Working classes didn't think of their nails at all, breaking them in the process of work. Just before walking out, you put a smelling box in your pocket. Such boxes contained a sponge dipped in perfume and was used instead of cologne. Washing wasn't common then and was even believed to be harmful. So, people got rid of body smell as best they could with the help of those perfume boxes. The journey has finally begun. The driver has a detailed atlas map instead of GPS. You have to ride about 200 miles, almost all day and all night. It's good you brought a book with you, so the trip's going well. But suddenly, you come to a river. The map shows a road, though. 
It was last updated more than a year ago, so the road has already been washed out by the rain. You have to go around the river. Detailed atlases were created to make it easier to navigate. They showed all the roads, localities, and inns. But while some were updated every month, others only once a year. You arrive in the city almost at night. Luckily, your friend has been waiting patiently at the gates all this time. And of course, he wasn't mad at you in the least. Half-day waiting was a mere trifle in a world where time was not yet so important. You can't wait to find out why you came here. Your friend promises to show you something as soon as you come to his place. There, you meet his family. Everyone is wearing beautiful outfits, and you take your Persian suit out of the suitcase. Your friend invites you all to the backyard. He lines everyone up. You don't understand what's going on, but you do what he says. Uh, you'll have to wait for a little while, he says. Wait for what? You're asking. At this moment, a tall man appears near the crowd with a strange tripod device. Photography, the friend answers. This word means nothing to you, but you continue to stand. The man with the camera asks you to stay still and say the word prunes. It was prunes, not cheese, people used to say when photographed. It gave the mouth a more serious and noble look. It was also difficult to smile for 15 minutes, the time of making just one shot. And besides, showing those teeth wasn't a very good idea. That's why people from old photos were so serious looking. After the photography, hmm. you can't believe what happened. Life is captured in a tangible image. You're shocked by this technology and sure that the future is near. We live in a new era in the 19th century. What a time to be alive! Now we go back to the 21st century. You have finally arrived at your best friend. Dude, you should see this. Look what I found in the basement, he says, and shows you a super old photo of all his ancestors from the 19th century. A guy in a strange Persian suit who looks a lot like you is captured in that photo too. Really? You are amazed. Dude, you could have scanned it and emailed it to me. It's the 21st century outside. <laughs>